The Scientists and Inventors Geek and Genius Kids Club Rescues Halloween. Holy moly and moly holy. It was three days before Halloween, and for the first time in my 10-year-old life, I suddenly knew how my 5th grade teacher is always feeling when Tommy Fanklitz of Finneman is giving one of his usual excuses for not doing his science homework. In his grumbly voice, Mr. Ankelson turns his head and looks out to the classroom window and moans, I'm not feeling like a happy camper today, Tommy Fanklitz of Finneman. It was October 28th. My mother was nearly finished with making my Halloween night costume. I was going to go trick-or-treating dressed as a not-so-famous yet very important scientist named Mr. Robert Yeats. I first discovered who he was when my friends in our elementary schools, the Scientists and Inventors Geeks and Genius Kids Club, decided to research, write, and publish an online booklet with drawings and photographs titled Steam in the Kitchen about the history of different kitchen appliances. By the way, you can download it off the internet on thepowerbox.org. Anyway, my mother was making my costume, which was a bright red kitchen can opener. Yep, I was dressing up as a can opener. It was invented in 1855 by Mr. Robert Yeats. I just think that it's such a magnificent contribution to the world. Without a can opener, how would I ever open a can of tomato soup? My favorite. When I'm hungry on the fourth Tuesday of every month. That's the night my mom makes the worst tasting spaghetti in the history of noodles and tomato sauce. Ugh, yeah! Holy moly, let me tell you. Oh, never mind. Back to my Halloween story. It was the afternoon of October 28th. The weather was taking a turn from warm and dry to chilly and gusty. I was sitting in the classroom staring out the window. Yellow, orange, brown, and red leaves were flying off, swaying trees and flying in the wind. I was wondering how hard would it be to ride my bike home from school? I was imagining the wind would pick me up and my bike up into the air and we'd fly through the sky like the wicked witch in the movie The Wizard of Oz. My house was three blocks away from the school, five blocks away from the public library, 12 blocks away from my favorite place in the world, the Children's Steam Museum. In case you don't know yet, STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. When I grow up, I want to be an inventor. Oh, 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 back to my Halloween story. And my school was 22 blocks from the pumpkin farm, one of my other favorite places. Each year, Three days before Halloween, the kids in our little country town, actually, some of us think it's more of a village, us kids go to the farm and we build scarecrows for a contest. Scarecrow Village Contest. Last year, the theme was international scarecrows. The rule was simple. All scarecrows had to be dressed in costumes from around the world. Germans were once called scarecrows Bootsamen, which led to the word boogeyman. At the annual contest, the famous Madame St. Lucia, the owner of the Think Richly Puppet Theater, performs a Scarecrow Marionette show. Last year's show was so great and I loved the flock of blackbird puppets, which kept attacking the corn on the cob puppets. Haunting ghost music is always broadcast through loudspeakers on lampposts. Singers, dancers, acrobats, each dressed as scarecrows, always perform in the pumpkin farm barn. Well, on that afternoon, in the Scientist and Inventors Geek and Genius Kids Club classroom, there appeared a text message on my cell phone. It was from my mom, and it sure didn't say the usual message from her, Ride your bike straight home from school and don't talk to strangers. Actually, there are no strangers in our town. Everyone knows everyone because we live in a small village, but that text was, Did you hear? The mayor just canceled the Scarecrow Village contest? How sad! Maybe you can build a scarecrow in our front yard. I just sat at my desk staring at my cell phone. I couldn't believe it. Needless to say, I was not a happy camper. 
Wendy Bloomfield, who wants to grow up to be an astronomer, and discovers strange looking creatures living on stars. Freddie Caniston, who wants to grow up to invent a ballpoint pen that never runs out of ink. Carrie Simpont, who wants to grow up to be a designer of 12 dimensional animated films. And Larry Webstenkranz, who wants to grow up to be a medical scientist who discovers the cure for every disease in the world. And myself, all ran out of the school, jumped on our bikes, and rode as fast as our legs could pedal to the pumpkin farm. We sat in the barn saying love, stunned. Shocked, confused, bewildered. Why did the mayor cancel the Scarecrow Village contest? How could we celebrate Halloween this year like everyone in our town has done for the last 120 or 150 or 200 years? Community traditions are so important. My dad always told me that when a community celebrates the same traditions year after year, then everyone has a sense of belonging to the community. Well, with all five of us want to be scientists and investors, yes. Some of the kids in our school make fun of us and call us geeks. Though the school counselor says five of us are young geniuses. Searching the internet for community news bulletins and people's outraged angry comments on social media postings, we put one to one together and discovered the mayor's motivation and reasoning. Putting one to one together isn't hard for any of us because each of us love doing math. Math is so much fun. Well, holy moly, we discovered that Mr. Copperhilly and Miss Fishhag, on behalf of the Dirt Poor Society of Rottenness, had concocted a devious holiday plan. Miss Fishhag and Mr. Copperhilly were the greediest, stingiest, angriest, most selfish people anyone in our town had ever met. They did not want anyone in the community to be happy, and they tried very hard every day to ruin a community's sense of happiness and healthy belonging. Mr. Copperhilly and Miss Fishhag had tons of money, but the purpose of being president and secretary of the Dirt Poor Society of Rottenness was to make everyone else feel poor. No one had ever seen either of them smile. No one bothered to say hello to them when they were seen in the grocery stores. Some people actually pitched their noses and curled their lips when they passed them in the aisles. I don't think it was because Mr. Copperhilly and Miss Fishhag wore too much perfume. More like, people wanted to avoid them more than they wanted to get on the path of stinking skunks. It's a good thing Wendy, Freddie, Carrie, Larry, and I have been told we're geniuses. Because... We put our minds to work and voila, we came up with a secret idea. Marvelous idea, but secret one for the time being that was. And it was all because of the booklet Steam in the Kitchen. Since my mom is always saying I should grow up to be an advertising executive, it would be out of my nature not to remind you that if you would like to download the colorful booklet about kitchen appliances, it's on the internet at thepowerbox.org. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention earlier. In it is also a few cooking and baking recipes from famous scientists, mathematicians, inventors. Well, we didn't keep our idea entirely secret. We told Farmer Joe who owned the pumpkin farm and each of us told our mom and dads we needed their help to carry out our semi-secret plan. Needless to say, I just love saying that, don't I? Needless to say, Everyone in our town was so sad and disappointed on October 28th, October 29th, and October 30th. Then it was Halloween night. Time to reveal the secret plan. One hour before the sun went down and it got dark and all costume trick-or-treaters began putting on their costumes, Wendy, who is a very good graphic artist, had designed a colorful poster that Carrie, Larry, Freddie, and myself posted on lampposts all over town. On the poster were large drawings of a can opener, a refrigerator, a stove, a blender, an oven, a shopping cart, plus ten small pumpkins and two scarecrows, one wearing a nursing outfit and the other a doctor's gown. The words on the poster, in big yellow, orange, red, and brown letters spelled out, Come to Farmer Joe's Pumpkin Farm Barn at 8 o'clock when you are finished trick-or-treating. We weren't shocked to hear that as soon as Mr. Copperhilly and Miss Fishhag saw the posters on the lamppost scattered throughout our community, they ordered the mayor to get on his bike and tear down each one. But those two mean, nasty, selfish people forgot that the mayor didn't have a bike and that he was way too tall to ride his 10-year-old daughter's bike. Well, at 8 o'clock, 
the parents and grandparents of our community began to arrive with their children and grandchildren who were dressed as witches, ghosts, vampires, princesses, monsters, fairies, animals, superheroes, ballerinas, baseball players, space creatures, and other characters. Many were nibbling on their candy bars. Inside the barn, the visitors were stunned. They couldn't believe their eyes. My mom and dad, along with the help of Wendy's, Carrie's, Larry's, and Freddie's parents, had built a gigantic kitchen filled with appliances everyone has in their home. I, wearing my can opener costume and standing next to me, was a scarecrow with a sign around its neck that read, Mr. Robert Yeats in 1855, who invented the can opener. Wendy's costume was that of a big green tomato. Standing next to her was a scarecrow wearing an American Civil War nursing outfit and a sign reading, Miss Clara Barton, founder of the American Red Cross, who baked green tomato pies for the injured soldiers. <sighs> Such a wonderful lady. Larry was wearing a large white square ice cube costume. Next to him was a scarecrow with a long white curly wig and a black robe. A sign around his neck read, Mr. William Cullen in 1775 invented the first refrigerator. Freddy, dressed as a large brown and yellow piece of toast, was standing next to a scarecrow with a sign that read, Mr. Charles Strait in 1921 invented the pop-up toaster. And at the other end of the barn, Carrie's costume was a gigantic molasses cookie. The scarecrow standing next to her had a sign that read, Dr. Annie Jump Cannon, the first woman to be named a scientific doctorate for her work classifying thousands of stars in the sky. Her favorite recipe was baking giant molasses cookies. As each adult, teenager, and child visited each of us, they ooed and awed. One little kid tried to take a bite out of Carrie's molasses cookie, but other than that, everyone was so happy and having so much fun. Until... The meanest two people in our community barged in. Mr. Copperhilly was the first to scream at the top of his lungs. The Scarecrow Village Contest was canceled this Halloween. Miss Fishhag then shouted in her high-pitched, shrilly voice. That sound like when someone drags their fingernails over a mirror. I hate Scarecrows! No more Halloween ever again in this town! People's mouths hung open and their eyes were even wider. Nobody moved. But then I, the walking red can opener, calmly approached the grisly couple. But this Halloween celebration isn't a scarecrow contest. It's a Halloween scientist and inventor geek and genius kids club Halloween celebration. You see, when everyone here goes home and the kids dump all their candy out on the kitchen tables, they look around and see they are living in history. And these scarecrows are replicas of famous scientists and inventors. They aren't traditional scarecrows. And it's not a contest. Perhaps you'd like to have a copy of our club's booklet, Steam in the Kitchen. There's a few other recipes in it, such as George Washington's carrot cake, Thomas Jefferson's chunky apple cake, and since the weather has turned really, really cold, the recipe from Miss Marianne and Jessie, who is the first woman mathematician in the United States, she made her famous asparagus soup for one of the greatest inventors of all time, Dr. Benjamin Franklin. That's right. Suddenly, Farmer Joe entered his pumpkin barn, but he wasn't wearing his usual red and black checkered shirt, blue overalls, and brown boots. He was dressed in a kitchen blender costume. A sign around his neck read, Mr. Stephen Poplowski in 1922 invented the kitchen blender. Everyone, except the nasty couple, applauded and cheered. Well, that's the story of October 31st when us five kids from the Scientists and Inventors Geek and Genius Kids Club rescued our community's Halloween. I hope you liked it, and I hope you all have a safe and healthy, fun Halloween this year. P.S. If you eat too much candy and get a stomachache, drink a glass of pasteurized milk, if you aren't lactose intolerant, that is, and think of the great microbiologist Louis Pasteur, who discovered all the way back in 1862 the process of heating milk to a particular temperature for a set amount of time to remove dangerous microorganisms. And if you do eat way too much candy and get a toothache, Ask your parents to take you to the dentist right away. 
And when you're sitting in the dentist chair, think of the first dentist who was named founder of the world's first school of dentistry. His name was Dr. John M. Harris. Jeez, my school counselor is right. I really am rather intelligent. Story written by Joseph Galata, voice recordings by Ryan Hayes, and sound mixing by Randall Scandal.